A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart, a heart contrite broken and contrite, humbled, O Lord, o God, you will, will not, not spurn. spurn. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A, a heart, heart contrite and, and humbled, O God, God you, you will, will not spurn. spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O oh God, you, you will, will not spurn. spurn. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will rise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. It took Jonah two calls and being slapped upside the head before he could figure out what he was supposed to do. He finally did it. 
And yet the people of Nineveh in the story, at one hearing, repent. And the sackcloth and ashes is nice, the fasting is nice, but the bottom line is that they turn from their wicked ways, and that's the core of repentance. You know, that's the core of repentance. We have a, a circumstance in the gospel where basically what the people are desiring is, okay, Jesus, show us, and then we'll believe in you. And Jesus is saying, believe in me, and you'll see. Believe in me, and you'll see. The Ninevites believed, and they saw. They saw the mercy of God. That's, that's the, the balance, it seems. The, 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 we, we crave this kind of sense of security and extra knowledge that really undercuts the principle of a love relationship. If we engage in somebody in a love relationship, the last thing we demand, or ought to demand, is ongoing proofs. Show me you love me. You know, on and on and on. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't and we aren't eager to do those kinds of demonstrations, okay? And so we better be remembering things like birthdays and anniversaries. That's just the way we are. But the fact is that the requirement put on somebody else, you prove that you love me, destroys a love relationship. It makes it mechanical. It makes it artificial. It makes it synthetic. And what Jesus is saying here is don't demand a sign. See what's here now. See the love and forgiveness that's here. I don't work miracles for show. I work them for love. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist, as we continue our day today, we may ask the Lord to help us truly to see with the eyes of faith and with the eyes of love, particularly in the course of our adoration all day today. And for that, let the Eucharist be the great sign, the only sign we truly need for God's love and mercy for us. Let us stand and pray. For the church throughout the world, for Pope Benedict, all the bishops in union.